Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, everyone. Um, well, Campi Flegri, the supervolcano, is the talk of the town again. I mean, the earthquake swarm, the big one, has eased down. We had some earthquakes at Vesuvius. We had another 1.8. But now scientists warn that one of the world's supervolcano is waking up because AI reveals four times more earthquakes at Italy's Campi Flegri than previously thought. They say 50,000 earthquakes in just three years. And of course, these are micro seismic earthquakes. But the headline is Campi Flegri waking up. Well, it's been waking up for quite a while, since 2005, actually. And if you watch my channel, you've seen that headline before, but not in relation with Campi Flegri, Santorini that had this massive earthquake swarm also in February, same like this catastrophic, not with catastrophic results, but huge earthquake swarm in Campi Flegri as well. So, of course, hundreds of thousands of people are at risk from this super volcano that is waking up. We could see something at any time, probably not a super volcanic eruption, but a phreatic eruption or a bigger earthquake. And of course, in the last few months, a series of powerful earthquakes for a volcano has shaken the region with two magnitude 4.6. And you have to put this in perspective. The engineers and the scientists say, if we see a magnitude five, that will end hundreds of thousands of people because of the buildings that will collapse. And I, we've just seen it in Turkey, in Afghanistan, these, unreinforced masonry brick homes. They are the problem. So now the experts are warning that the number of earthquakes in the region is actually four times higher than so far announced. What does that mean? They have used AI to detect these micro seismic quakes. So is there more power underneath the supervolcano? Is it closer to eruption or phreatic eruption than we're all thinking? Then all these studies tell us, and the studies do tell us that it's getting closer to do something. So the numbers of earthquakes between 2025 and 2022, they have increased them now from 12,000 to more than 54,000. That is a huge number and it sounds really scary at the beginning. Basically, what's the takeaway from this is that this suggests that an earthquake of the magnitude five range is not out of reach anymore because usually, and that's what scientists found out, we have a certain number of earthquakes of one magnitude and then we can expect a higher magnitude. So. Stanford University was involved in this as well. Many institutions all over the world, the INGV and local scientists. So basically what a co-author of this story, of this new study is saying, these long faults suggest that an earthquake in the magnitude five range is not out of the question and the area is not prepared at all. This would be widespread devastation in one of the most densely populated areas in the world with more than 6 million people in the area of Campi Flegri between Vesuvius and Campi Flegri. The author of the study further says, we've known that this is a risky place. We've known that for a long time since the 1980s when part of the city was evacuated. And now we're seeing for the first time that these geologic structures underneath the supervolcano are very responsive because AI has now painted the picture. And if you look at this map, all these red dots, these are the areas where they have detected all these earthquakes. And of course, we have the big cluster, the big red dot underneath the Solfatara, this desert-like crater where we have most of the earthquakes, Potsuli. This is the most likely area for a phreatic eruption or worse, we can't rule that out, but also for a magnitude five earthquake, which would let all these homes collapse far into Naples as well. 
So the author of the study, yes, he says we've known that for quite a long time, definitely since the 1980s when part of the city was already evacuated because of that Brady Sizem that was going on there. And now they say we're seeing for the first time what is really responsible for that, the geologic structures underneath. And Campi Flegre itself, if you translate it, it's burning fields. Flegrean fields has last erupted in 1538 when Monte Nuovo was created. So it doesn't erupt, erupt super often, but the volcano has shown definitive signs of unrest in the recent decades with a drastic escalation in the recent months. So this is a volcanic region. It's home to more than 500,000 people in the red zone, Pozzuoli and this area around it. They have experienced episodes of unrest since the late 1950s. And the current period of unrest has started in 2005 with a significant increase in earthquakes since 2018, including five earthquakes at least, probably six or seven above magnitude four. This year alone, five earthquakes above magnitude four. We just had one a few days ago. So the new data that they have from this study is, is not only about the earthquakes. The data have revealed that two faults, fault lines that are converging underneath the town of Pozzuoli, not only the supervolcano, we're talking fault lines now, right underneath the town of Pozzuoli. It seems Pozzuoli gets it all. And that's just a little bit west of Naples. And of course, they have continuously monitored the area since the 1980s when Another similar unrest that was not as powerful as the current one um, has caused the land to rise more than six feet and more than 16,000 earthquakes have prompted the evacuation of 40,000 residents. They did evacuate for quite a while. Thankfully, nothing happened. It looked, it was like a magma intrusion. Magma didn't make the way to the top, but was intruding. And in the past 400,000 years, Campi Flegri has produced two of the largest eruptions in Europe. So now the researchers are saying they have not yet seen any evidence for the upward movement of magma within the volcano right now, which re reduces short term concerns that it could erupt. But we have many studies that say otherwise, that say only a little bit more pressure is needed for the magma to rise up. You've probably seen my video about that crack that they discovered that is basically like a straw into the magma chamber. So the earthquakes that we're seeing and the ones that are probably coming still have the potential to endanger lives in a big way and damage buildings and infrastructure. So now, since they know that there's also these fault lines in addition to the volcano, the researchers say that knowing the location and the length of a fault, the basically the space between two blocks of rock that, that move around and cause these earthquakes can help experts to determine the range of and the magnitude of future quakes. So what they make clear to us is the seismicity could change at any time and that may be the most important thing about this study and i'm like reading this and i'm like well we kind of know that right the ingv scientist mastro lorenzo de natale they said also just recently we know that more is coming while the land is rising while the pressure is building up drastically increased gas emissions right now rocks will crack and we will see more and eventually stronger earthquakes so that doesn't really shake me up when i hear that sentence but they're saying that the capability that they have now through AI of getting a clear view is now operational. So it's working. And then they're saying when the volcano eventually erupts, it's likely to be comparable in size to the eruption of Mount Vesuvius that destroyed the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. Um, yeah, maybe, right? We don't know. 
Capiflegre is way more dangerous than Vesuvius. And a new study has also found that many people in Pompeii were not ended by Vesuvius. They were ended by their homes collapsing on top of them. And then the eruption happened because the eruption was preceded by a strong earthquake. That's why it is so dangerous right now for this highly densely populated region. But other scientists are also saying that if this gigantic sleeping supervolcano blows, it could create an ash plume large enough to plunge Earth into global winter for years. And it has done that in the past. So I see this way more risky than Vesuvius. If it has a smaller eruption, maybe we can compare it with Vesuvius. The INGV has released a statement just now here they also say artificial intelligence has been applied to develop high definition seismic catalogs. A new study reveals unpublished details about the seismic activity in the caldera. Researchers have used artificial intelligence AI um, to and they developed at Stanford that was developed at Stanford University and they have applied this technology to seismographs that are registered by the INGV in the Flegrean Fields area and they have identified over 50,000 earthquakes between 2022 and 2025 and now they have a high definition catalog and they say this catalog has highlighted a system of active faults and has provided important details about the origin of the current phenomenon. But guys, we have found this at Santorini, for example, as well. There's always more shaking. Does that mean we have to be more afraid? In my opinion, not, because the stronger earthquakes that we have already measured, they tell the story that there is a big unrest happening right now. So for me, this doesn't really add to my level of anxiety about that super volcano, because basically it only shows us, yes, there's more rumbling in the micro seismic area. But again, the scientists, the INGV, they're telling us with the big earthquakes, with the unrest, with the land rise, with the accelerating temperatures that we're seeing in the Fumaroles, with the drastically increased gas emissions. We already know that this thing is nearing something. So it is interesting to see what AI can do, but I don't think it changes anything in the level of danger that we're assuming so far. But certainly very, very interesting. And one comment that I think I want to let you know um, of an Italian local resident um, commented on the INGV publication. And he said in less than three years, thanks to artificial intelligence, over 50,000 earthquakes have been registered to Campi Flegri. Um, it's not just a scientific fact. It's earthquakes that have forced hundreds of people to leave their homes that cause anxiety and remind them every day how fragile this land is. Science tells us that the boiler is under pressure. This doesn't mean that an eruption is imminent, but it means that the scenario can change. We can imagine three possibilities, and I think he leaves out one, I'll mention that, but he says most likely scenario, many small earthquakes, some stronger shakes, limited but repeated shaking, life goes on with increasing difficulties for the people that live there. Intermediate scenario, more intense earthquakes, magnitude 4.5 to 5, damage to many buildings, thousands of people forced to leave their homes, disrupt, disruptions in services and schools. And he has to leave out what the experts are saying. Many, many people will be lost by these collapsing buildings. And then he goes to the worst case scenario. Um, but there's something in between. I'll let you hear the worst case scenario. He says, worst case scenario, less likely, but predictable, severe system meltdown, more powerful tremors and signs of magma rising. In this case, they would launch plans for mass evacuation from the red zone around Pozzuoli um, with hundreds of thousands of people on the move. And then 
Something between intermediate and worst case scenario is a phreatic eruption that doesn't need magma on the move. That is the most likely scenario for an eruption, and it can happen at any time without a warning or a very, very short warning time. This is the biggest threat right now, in my opinion, in addition to the larger earthquakes. But then he says, and that's interesting, that's why the point isn't just to monitor, but to decide. He's criticizing the politicians that can't make a decision on what to do. He says, the declaration of a state of national emergency should be seriously discussed, which would guarantee rapid resources and unique coordination between civil protection, INGV, region and municipalities. He wants the politicians to move their butts. He says you need to have clear evacuation plans so they don't improvise in a densely populated area like this one. Exactly. And he says we need to support those who have already been forced to leave their home um, without leaving them alone in, in bureaucracy and uncertainties. Yes to that as well. And then he says, Finally, transparent communication is needed. People need to understand in simple words what is happening and what are the possible consequences. So he says this new research has given us an accurate picture right now. Now politics has to translate it into concrete actions. And he says because we can't wait until the scenario gets worse to discover we're not ready. Wow, what a great comment. And I'll close the video with that, guys. Please leave this video a like. Hype the video. There's a hype button in the comments. If you want to support the channel, it's greatly appreciated. Please fill me up with coffee on my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. Link is in the description. Thank you for your supers. Hello, all new members. Thank you for supporting the channel with clicking the join button and becoming a monthly member of the channel. And I see you in the next one, guys. There's lots in the end screens. Crazy what is going on. See you in a second. Bye-bye.